Hello. So it's a little windy today uh, here on the island of Maui and hopefully that won't disrupt the audio too much. I think I'm just going to make this little story time about something that happened to us today, to happened to our family. I think it'd just be good to be able to look back on. So last night we were all asleep. We were in our big master bedroom. We have a whole bunch of different beds. So all my kids are in there with us and we're asleep. And at about four o'clock in the morning, I open my eyes and I see a dark shadow of a person standing in my house, in our doorway to our master bedroom. My first instinct obviously is going to be that, oh, there's a person standing in my doorway. But then I was like, well, maybe it's Axel. So I said, Axel, Axel. And I didn't get a response and the person did not move. They just continued to stare into our bedroom and they just had the door open and we're just staring straight at us all where all of our beds are. So then I said, Patrick, Patrick, wake up. And then he said, huh? I said, there's a person in our doorway. Well, I mean, this person is within 10 feet of me, so they're hearing all of this. And then Patrick reaches over to, because it's dark, right? He reaches over to find Axel's bed to see that he's in his bed. And then once he feels that he's there, he just goes into protector mode and just starts, whoa, you know, get out of here. Just like gets up and starts going toward the person, just yelling. And it took him being very loud and very forceful with his voice and getting close to the person for the person to even react and like, oh, I need to leave. So he turned around and started walking down our long hallway. Well, Patrick closes the door, locks us in there. I wake up all the kids. Axel at this point is like, disoriented but awake and then I wake up River and tell her hey there's an emergency. Cedar at this point had also woken up that's my youngest so we have Axel, River and Cedar and they're 13, 6 and a uh, little one-year-old. They're all awake at this point lock ourselves in the bedroom and thankfully last night I actually brought my phone into our bedroom which typically we try to keep them out of our bedroom but I won't be doing that anymore. <laughs> uh, so we were able to call the police and then they came out, Patrick met with them, explained the situation. The cops, I think were, there were a couple of rookies and they didn't really have, uh, you know, they have a lot more to learn <laughs> and to improve their skills. But I was very thankful for them and was glad that we had someone to call who came and assisted us to help get this person out of our home. We stayed in the room and it took a good like 45 minutes or so for them to finally get this person out because what had happened is when Patrick had yelled at them, they had gone to the other end of our home and had locked themselves in our office. And uh, at this point, sorry if, the, if my camera video is shaky, I'm holding my phone still because I got a little, like Patrick got me a little phone tripod, but I don't have anywhere to set it and I haven't figured out like the best place for me to film these videos. So sorry, hopefully it's not like too insane. But anyway, it took them a good while because she had locked both doors to this bedroom. And you know, one of the officers was trying to climb through the bathroom, the attached bathroom window. And it was just like this huge drama fest. Patrick, he felt okay because when the person walked away, he was like, this person, it just doesn't make sense. It seems like it might be a, a woman they didn't seem like crazy violent or like they're trying to attack us or hurt us. He just, he didn't get that vibe from the situation. Granted, we were still being extremely careful and it was extremely scary regardless when you wake up at four o'clock in the morning and there's a human who you don't know inside of your home staring down at you and your children in the dark. Like it's extremely terrifying. But Patrick ended up helping them, had to remove the trim of the door and he's like legitimately right there with them helping these officers figure out how to get into this room to get this person, whoever's in there, we have no idea, right? Besides just like Patrick seeing this shadow of a person walk away from him. He was able to help the police officers. They were able to get in there. They got this person on the ground, had guns on her, which it ended up being a woman. And she had no clothing on, so she was completely nude. She was wet, she had like wet hair. Uh, which come to find out, we ended up going to the front yard and our water hose was on. So it seems like she came here, she had a jacket, she removed her jacket, hosed herself, bathed herself with our hose in the front yard, and then came through a screen, came through one of our windows. So she locked herself back in this back bedroom, ended up getting on the bed, so getting the bed wet with her hair. And But once they took her into custody, you know, they got in the police cars, 
the kids at this point and I, you know, felt more safe at this point because we're like, we figured out who it was and that it seemed like it, you know, it wasn't going to be a violent situation, thankfully. Then of course we had to go back and forth with the officers. Do we want to press charges? Do we not? They had an ambulance come out here and they did a, a you know, checked her vitals and all that. And they were like, well, she, she checks out. And then we, we didn't know what to do when you're dealing with people who have mental health issues or drug abuse issues it's so hard, right? When they're not violent, it's so hard because I don't want this person to go out and go to the neighbor and go to some other family to scare, uh, terrify. But also it's like, what help? Like, how do we get this person some help, you know? So we decided not to press charges initially, but because they did say that she had a court summons and, you know, there was some level of accountability that she was gonna be required to be a part of. So they released her into our neighborhood which was a little unsettling for me because I'm like, this is, she just could come right back. And it's, it's a hard thing, right? Because your heart goes out to this person. But at the same time, like my first priority is the safety of my family. And, um, it's, you can't come into my house <laughs> unless I invite you. And so that was a tough thing, but you know, we watched her walk out and she turned around and like looked at us for a while, kind of confusedly and, and then walked on and, you know, I just didn't feel right about it. Well, a little while later, Patrick was, going over and talking to one of our neighbors and it ended up that she wandered right into a neighbor's yard and uh they called the police so the police came back and they actually took her into custody and then those officers uh, when patrick talked with them they were upset with officers who we initially dealt with because they were like they should not have just let her go because she's not mentally well and she could go get herself hit by a car like who knows what happened you know she's just randomly walking into someone's home and like showering and you know doing all these things and just walking into people's bedrooms staring at them so she's not in a healthy mental place i was glad that the officers did end up taking her and they said they were going to go give her get her a psych evaluation and you know kind of figure out where she came from and what the situation is so that was good but of course to experience something like that with your kids and just the whole thing especially seeing as i have legitimately had this fear for a whole bunch of years um, it was interesting to kind of see it like come to life uh, to a degree obviously it was like best case scenario for the type of situation you know it could have been so much worse such a worse situation much more traumatic and so we have definitely taken on the perspective of being extremely grateful for this and we've learned some things you know we're pretty mindful and aware people but this is just an extra level that will be added to our perspectives and our um you know the mental picture we have of reality and how we should operate in it. But it was interesting because I feel like a year ago, I may have had a much bigger problem <laughs> with this situation. It may have triggered me into like a bad fear spiral. And then I probably would have had a hard time coming back to this home. And um, this is a, we're just renting for the winter season. We don't actually own this home. Um, but regardless, it's like, I know I would have probably had an issue coming back. I would have felt afraid. I would have been like, oh no, anyone can just come in here and this is crazy. Uh, but because I've been doing all this internal work, like around fear, around just what it means to exist, my belief in my infinite existence and my belief that I'm not just a physical body and there's so many things that are unseen. The world is a crazy place. It's a wild place, but it's also a place filled with love and connection and beauty and healing and growth. And so many of these crazy experiences actually propel us forward in a much quicker way. <laughs> I don't know. It, it was a very interesting experience and the kids, it was, cool to watch them walk through it and to actually like be really grounded and be okay and not to be shaken up uh especially like river specifically for her to come out of it and be like okay yeah that wasn't i did not enjoy that i don't want that to happen again but i still have peace within my heart and within my spirit you know and that's how i feel uh that's how i felt and that's how i continue to feel and patrick as well and also afterward after she this woman had left our property and then patrick ended up at the neighbors with her in the yard patrick was able to observe this woman for several minutes and he came home and just almost started to cry because he was just his heart was having so much empathy for this person who was just very confused definitely exhibiting signs of being afraid which makes sense if you're mental space is not clear and you can't rely on it 
it's a scary place to be, I'm sure. And for those of us who have dealt with any kind of mental health issues, to imagine getting to that place to where you're that far gone, to where you will just wander into someone else's house and go into someone's bedroom that in that way, that's terrifying to think about living in that reality. So he just, Patrick, he had so much empathy for her and was just like, oh, it just breaks my heart. It makes me so grateful that we are of healthy mind and that we're able to continually grow in our consciousness and in our awareness and we actually are cognizant of like what's happening around us uh not everything obviously a very small percentage of what's actually happening do we actually pay attention to and, and recognize however to be in that place to where you're just you're so far gone it just gave us a lot of empathy for her and a lot of gratefulness for where we are and a and a hope for people like her that we can somehow help them more and do better than just like, okay, well, we're just gonna put them in jail for a few days and then we're gonna let them back out. Like, there has to be a better system. There has to be something better and it's gonna take revolutionaries and visionaries to come forth with their, their big ideas that are transformative and that can help to move our world and move our society in a better, more holistic, more healthy direction. If we can tap in to like, okay, here's the fear, and this is really scary, and this is all, but if we can shift our perspective to, instead of being a victim of the fear, to where it is controlling us, we can flip the script and decide to see the fear as, and the, the situation as something that we can, uh, overcome is not really the right word, but that we can move forward through and past, and that we are capable, and whatever comes our way, we can handle it. It doesn't mean it's not gonna be hard. It doesn't mean we aren't gonna be overwhelmed or that we're gonna be, you know, have our systems hijacked sometimes or that we're gonna be triggered, whatever. But we can train our minds to view this, these scary things in a growth mindset kind of light so that we can say, okay, this is, I'm feeling this fear. This is terrifying. What do I do? Like, how can I get out of the victim role and flip it? and say like, okay, what do I do here? How do I take action in a positive direction to move past this? But wow, life is a wild and true ride. And there's so much beauty in the journey, so much adventure, so many crazy, insane, fear-inducing, uncomfortable situations, but, but my baby needs me, so I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching, bye. P.S. We spoke with the owner of the house and we were going to get an alarm system installed and all fixed up so all of you who are concerned and probably will be asking what are you gonna do we're gonna handle it so that we feel a little bit more secure and uh yeah we're all good baby needs me again <laughs> bye